Pastor Cindy here with our midweek break. So you're all aware that we're facing difficult issues on several fronts these days. Yes, we're still in a pandemic. We want everyone to be safe. So we've established protocols that we ask you all to follow when you enter the building. Some are reluctant to follow the protocols and we get that, but we ask you to do so anyway for the good of all. We want everyone to have equal access to the opportunities with which we are blessed, that allow us to live into our full potential, to live our best lives regardless of age, skin color, wealth, place of birth, beliefs, sexual orientation, among others. Now that might mean we have to think about issues of discrimination that some believe don't apply to us and that some believe should be the only thing we discuss. We might have to find empathy for both those who commit crimes and for the police officers we send in to contain them. You might want to take one side over the other and we get that, but we ask you to pray for all concerned anyway. We're praying for our students and teachers and parents. We have some who are relieved that schools are staying online. We have many who believe it's vital that they get back together in person. Yesterday, we get that. We will pray for all, regardless. And we haven't talked much about it lately, but we are still facing major issues of division in our global United Methodist Church in upcoming months and years. Some will jump into that fray with strong opinions and plans of action, and the church of the future may look very different. Others will resist any change and find a way to continue with business as usual. We get that too. We will pray for them all anyway. We're praying for our Northern Illinois Conference, which is facing some major financial issues and we'll be proposing a plan to the annual conference this year to reduce the number of districts and district superintendents as a cost-saving measure. There have already been positions eliminated in the administrative areas. We pray for those making these decisions and for those whose lives are impacted by them. And we pray for the local churches seeking to be healthy enough to support the connectional church of which we are a part. We are praying for many who are facing some serious and unexpected health issues right now. It's a painful time for many. And we are praying for our staff and our leaders as we continue to develop new ways to connect all of you and still try to maintain the level of energy we need to carry them out even as we come off of a summer season that has been anything but restful. We're praying for our vulnerable folks who continue to be isolated from family and friends. But mostly and most importantly, I ask that we each continue to pray to be able to keep at the core of who we are as the body of Christ, the deep desire to worship our gracious God. Because the only way we can bring about a positive impact on any of the above is to stay in love with God. And the way we stay in love with God is through worship. To that end, we're going to be offering a new way to worship beginning mid-October. The exact date is still dependent upon the installation of the necessary equipment in the sanctuary, which looks to be the first week in October. And then of course, we have to practice a bit to be sure we know how to use it. If any of you have any interest in cameras or other technology, we could really use your help to make this happen. The new worship will be live, in person, in the sanctuary. In keeping with all the COVID guidelines, we can only gather um, a group of 50 persons or less, which includes our worship leaders. So we'll be offering a registration process to limit the numbers. I'm not still sure if there's even 50 of you out there that are interested in returning to in-person worship. Although our survey a couple of months ago um, and a few emails I've received seem to indicate that that is the case. 
The main reason for doing this is to offer a traditional worship style that will be available online, in this case via live stream, for those of you who have indicated that that's your preference. So even though you may not be able to attend, you can feel like you're part of a live worship experience. And with the equipment installed, even after the COVID limitations have been lifted, we can continue to live stream those services for those with limited ability to attend in person. The live stream will be recorded as well so that those of you who are beginning to find a preference to worship at other times during the week will be able to access that recording. We will also continue to offer a pre-recorded video worship, shifting that to a more engaging format with music from the 9G Praise Team, the same message that you would find in the sanctuary, but maybe a few more creative elements thrown in. Now, that's a lot of work, you might say. Why, yes, yes it is. And honestly, I'm not sure we can pull it off, but I'm willing to try because worship, setting aside time each week to be formed in community, even though apart, to be shaped in the image of God, to hear the word spoken, to open our hearts, to be moved by the Holy Spirit, to discipline ourselves, to keep the Sabbath as our sacrifice in union with Christ's incomparable sacrifice for us. You see, nothing else happens without it. Nothing that is of God, anyway. So will you join me in making worship of our Creator God a priority? Set aside that time each week and may the God of all grace bless you and keep you as you find the way that means the most to you to worship. Have a great week.